Hello everyone, I greet in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Newton Salas and today we have a very interesting video to react to. It's actually a video I caught across in the on the YouTube um, channel by um, Muslim Convert um, Story and it's actually a video of the Dane show of course I guess that for some of you who take out Islamic um, videos might um, know him so he's sharing his experience he had with um, Jehovah Witness um, lady who then who tries to you know introduce um, Christianity to him a very interesting one so I want us to listen to this very video and of course I'm going to make comment at the end of the video and I hope that all of us are going to learn from this um, video so if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out so guys before we get on to the video I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's thought or opinion this is basically for educational purposes and I believe that at the end of this video we all are going to learn from this so guys without any further ado let's get down to this video and check this out a knock on your door two strange faces with pleasing smiles requesting a few minutes of your precious time and in next to no time they're preaching their faith to you. Sounds familiar, does it? As you see, they use every opportunity to speak and convince others on their beliefs. This being a classic example of a Muslim brother at a gas station, waiting his turn to pump gas, and he hears a lady's voice calling out to him. So I'm at the gas station pumping some gas. Very early, and it's very cold out. So as I'm trying to get in my car as the gas is pumping, I hear someone call out, sir, excuse me. So my first reaction is maybe someone needs some money. And as I turn around, it was a lady. And it didn't look like she needed any money because she had something in her hand and she was, t she was telling me, can I, sh she was asking if she can share this with me and asked me a question. So I figured it out. I said, wow. She has something that she really believes in and she wanted to share it with me. I said, sure, so go ahead. And she asked me a question, it's exactly what's on the cover of this, what's called Watchtower. She said, sir, do you believe, does God care about us? Does God care about you? I said, of course God cares about us. He created us. He feeds us. He provides the air that we breathe. He nurtures us every day. We're alive. We're benefiting from all the blessings that the Creator has given us. Only someone blind in the heart would not be able to see these things. And we went on and on and we spoke. So one of the benefits is that you never know when you're going to be given an opportunity to share, to do the Dawah. And you've got to be prepared. The Jehovah's Witnesses implement a system commonly referred to as proselytizing, where they visit door to door to talk to people about their faith. Moving on, many Jehovah's Witnesses preachers who attempt talking to Muslims eventually end up in animated conversations and logical debates. Jehovah's Witnesses are known for their aggressive door to door evangelism, but many don't know that some are open to learning about other religions. In this video, a Muslim was approached by a Jehovah's Witness recently and she took the opportunity to teach them about Islam. So we believe there is nobody worthy of more love, more obedience than the one who created you, the one who created me, the one who created trillions of galaxies. So Muslims worship the Creator. And that Muhammad is his final prophet. Some of the key teachings of Islam such as the six articles. The Jehovah's Witness listened attentively and even asked questions along the way. Your beliefs was um, and something we have in common, uh, our, our understanding of God as the only true God. I mean, only it's something that we write and then his son Jesus. He begets not, neither right. is begotten. So, but then this same God, we refrain, we call him aggressive as Jehovah, has given true Christians a very important assignment so 
So he said, he says that if you love even Jesus Christ, love uh, and obey me. Uh, if you love and obey me, then you do what, you know, you do what my father asked me to do. So, so love is not just predicated on just verbal expression of affection. When you love someone, then you obey that in oh, us, yeah. right? Love so, and obedience goes right, together. Right. right. So that's what we say. La ilaha illallah. There is nobody so, worthy of more love, so, more obedience than the one who created. So, so that's our religion. In a more complex journey, a Catholic born in an area commonly referred to as the Bible Belt in the U.S., but his entire family converted to Jehovah's Witness when he was six years old. He became a pastor but yet didn't find a solution to all his questions and didn't get the fulfillment he required. He stumbles upon a person, a lady, who seemed all happy and content and realizes she is Muslim and started talking to her. Allah paves the path seamlessly for those who are seekers of the truth. I could not fathom why God would subject my mom to such lifelong punishment. I could not imagine what great sin she must have committed or that we her children must have committed to deserve my father. I didn't have the maturity to sort out such questions, but I had enough fear and anger to provoke them. I was too young to see the wisdom in allowing my father to, I mean my mom, to suffer the violence and abuse of my father. I was too young to understand why God would let innocent children tremble night after night after night in their beds, fearing that they might not see their mother the next morning. I was too young to see how the mercy of God could even extend to my father with all his terrible failings. All I could see in my world was chaos and violence and fear, and so it became easy for me to question the existence of God, and I began to do that at a very early age. A Nigerian brother, a follower of Jehovah's Witness, meets a Muslim brother and is completely bowed over with facts and persistent questioning at various points during the conversation. And if you saw Mary, the mother of Jesus, with her head covered and her loose clothes on walking down the street here in North London, you would think, what religion would you think she was? I would think she's a Muslim. Okay, you think Muslim. All these scientific statements are in the Quran, and there isn't a single statement in the Quran which contradicts modern science. The Quran is 100% scientifically accurate, okay? The Quran is a book which is 1400 years old. It's a book that's easy to memorize. And millions and millions of people have memorized the Quran off by heart, Faris, which means that it's a book that's very difficult to change. If someone tried to change the Quran or produce a new book and change one or two words in it, and it's like the Quran, but in two words difference, people would spot it straight away. Yeah. Because millions of people know the Quran off by heart and they would see it's different and they would say it's not the Quran. Make sense? Yes. Yes, it makes sense. So as a Jehovah's Witness, would you say the Quran must be from God? The Quran must be from God, but at the same time, I've not really gone really deep into um, the comparison between the Bible and the um, Quran. We're but not trying there's to... A big sim there's a lot of similarity, and it's, I'll be honest, yeah, if somebody is to do a research on it, yeah, it's going to take a long time. You can call yourself a Jehovah's Witness, but the reality is first, you're really actually a Muslim and I would suggest look you can go and do more research okay but I feel that God has already guided you you accept the Quran is from God therefore you have to accept that Muhammad peace be upon him is a messenger of God because the Quran says so Ashhadu Ashhadu An An La ilaha La ilaha Illallah Illallah Wa Wa Ashhadu Ashhadu Anna Anna Muhammadan, Muhammadan, Abduhu, Abduhu, wa Rasulahu, wa Rasulahu. In another enlightening story, a Muslim man who married a follower of Jehovah's Witness describes how he allowed his wife to come to Islam when she was prepared and convinced. In what turned out to be a beautiful journey of understanding and compassion, his wife came to Islam six years after their marriage. Essentially after meeting his Muslim parents and family, who treated her with love and respect. In all the years they were of different faiths, they had many diverse conversations over the differences and similarities of Islam and Jehovah's Witness. As Islam gains traction and people seek to fulfill the loneliness and discontent within themselves, 
More and more of them are walking into Islamic centers and masjids. The true word of Allah can never be debated or nullified. And we see from the above mentioned incidents how even Jehovah's Witness followers are eventually attracted to Islam. Hmm. Wow. That's a very interesting um, video, listening to some of these um, stories of um, Jehovah Witness, their encounter with um, Muslims and how it turns out. For me, I would say that there is nothing wrong for you to do evangelism, go to people, speak to them, talk to them, you understand, about your God. As for the Jehovah Witness um, people, of course, they believe in the person of the Lord um, Jesus Christ and of course, there is nothing wrong for them to go about in a sense preaching about him because that's the commission that is given to every um christian and then what you are supposed to do is to go out there and disciple and preach in a sense the gospel of jesus christ to people same thing is also applicable to the muslim of course you could see some of them in a sense going about in a sense doing their dawah speaking to people about prophet muhammad about the message of prophet muhammad about the oneness of God and why people should serve him and only and then also talks about in a sense the foundation of Islam and what Islam represent for me I feels like all these things in a sense there is nothing wrong with it because if you look at it they just go nobody force anyone in a sense to have the conversation and I think that this conversation in a sense are needed seriously either for the Christians or for the Muslim, it would be good for you to be able to understand Christianity, understand the identity and what they believe in. Whether you understand you want to accept Christianity or not, but at least try to be open-minded, understand, you understand what they worship and why they do what they do. It's actually even be very easier for you to have conversation with them, talk to them, and then understand what they believe. If it feels like, of course, you want to introduce your religion to them, you can go ahead and do it. And that's why I kind of like the dialogue that I saw the Jehovah Witness man and then the woman, the way they are sitting and then they are having a dialogue and all those things. It's very good and healthy. That's for me. I feel like it's healthy, okay, to have this kind of um, conversation because that is just the only way that we can be able to understand, understand each other. Else otherwise, we will just be there from the outside or from distance and then people tend to criticize other religion and then some people will say some things about some religion on what they perceive and whatever they may be saying sometimes may not be true or it could be like because somebody have a certain kind of character trait and then doing something that does not that is not good for the society and then you see some people could decide to generalize it i've always said that not just because of somebody is being seen going to the mosque automatically makes him a muslim because when you understand you are a muslim and you don't even practice what prophet muhammad tells you to do then I may not consider you innocent as a Muslim. Same thing is applicable to Christian. There are a lot of people that go to church, but that does not still make them innocent Christian, right? So that's why we need to have a dialogue. Hear what the person innocent have. Let's actually hear what is in the person. Let's be able to like understand how he understand what he says in a sense he is worshiping. Who knows how this kind of healthy um, conversation in a stand with them? Just like here in this very channel. If some of you be very honest, you bear with me that though sometimes of course because i'm a christian maybe probably i tend to say some certain things but then you would realize that sometimes i could say some things here without actually taking sight okay all i just trying to encourage you is to say is that whatever religion in a sense you practice just practice it and follow it completely that's just what you understand i have been saying and not necessarily saying that you have to because you are in my channel then you have to be a muslim or you have to be a christian no i am not saying that you should be a christian or you understand i have to be a muslim but then i want us to be able to have this kind of dialogue that will have this very understanding but then if at some point you understand some of you feels like of course Christianity is the right way and you decide to convert to Christianity, that's your choice. Or if I decide one day and I felt like Islam is the right way and I decide to convert to Islam, that's my choice. It does not bounce that um, anyone should feel like, oh no, just be there. Just keep studying, okay? That's all I can say to you. Keep studying, okay? And you as a Muslim, you need to also understand Islam so that should in case you have somebody trying to have this kind of conversation with you, don't push the person away. Listen to the person. Same thing is also applicable to a Christian. When a Muslim approach you and then they are talking to you about Prophet Muhammad, please don't push them away. Listen to them. Hear what they want to say to you. Whether you convert to Islam or not, but then definitely I know that you definitely learn something from them. 
So let's be very open-minded. Whenever you know, we encounter people and they want to share the word of God with us, let's try to what to listen to them, hear what they are going to say to us. To so whether we convert to their religion or not, it does not matter. What that matters is let's hear from them. You may not know. So that's why in essence I'm saying that let's listen to each other. I think that it will be better at the end of the day. All of us still preach about, you understand, the oneness of God. Just that the whole concept, you understand, differs when you try to, when you try to explain it. But then, a very interesting video, and I hope that some of you learn a lot, you understand, as far as this video is concerned. And may God bless you, and I see you in my next video. So this is the end of my video. If you like my reaction, if you like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section, and I'm going to check it out so guys you remain blessed and i see you in my next video bye bye